This is your Degenerate Power Hour, your late night golden shower. Too ill to be sick, so thick you can't split. That carnival spin with the rictus grin. I'm Joel, he's BMO, and this is Vagrants and Vandals Radio. I always do that. Like I, I mess my. I'm saying it just fine, and then part of my brain's like, "Don't mess it up now." The minute you think about it, <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, "Wait, wait, what was that line?" All right. So hey, big, big news though. Big news, and I'm gonna let Bemo break it. Bemo has landed us our first <laughs> sponsor. I'd like to thank uh, Bruce of Big Bruce's Burger Spot for coming through with a big donation to the podcast. Thank you, Bruce. Brought us uh, lunch. It was delicious. Oh, yeah. It's very tasty. Filled my gullet. Um, if you jump to my personal Facebook page, you can check out his location and what he has to offer. It's uh, pretty amazing. Right here in Monroe, Michigan, the Money Row. And now this new burger joint is located where? Right off of Telegraph on Stony Creek Road. It's Tele- kind of tucked away, so. Very important. Telegraph, Stony Creek, but I wanted to make sure you mentioned that. Like uh, you could drive by and miss it. Yeah. Very it took us a few times to get there. Now, Brucey boy, he uh, he initially uh, he started a burger chain up north, from what I understand, is where he got to start. That's what I heard somewhere up in the UP, actually. Um, nice. He Maybe he knows some of the boy at Kinfolk. Very well, very well, may know them. Look at that, Big Bruce's Burger Spot. But they know him. He might not know them, but they know him. Sure, sure. Yeah. Bruce's burgers are no joke. <laughs> Good stuff. Now you went there the other night with April. What'd you have? Yeah, I had myself a cheeseburger. A little bit of pickle, a little bit of lettuce. Their secret sauces on the when they do it weird, they put it on the bottom and it was it was it was good though. It was like a Mac sauce. Um and then home home battered uh, onion rings. All for eight ninety nine. You really can't beat it. Onion rings are good. No, oh, they were delicious. All right. You're battered. So That's thanks tough. again, Bruce. We appreciate it. And now, l- listen, so for our, for our eager uh, uh, and regular listeners, if you go to look this up, it's so new. It's not quite listed on Google, correct? Yeah, that's absolutely correct. So, Brucey boy, just going to need you to stop by Telegraph, Stony Creek. Stony Creek. Keep an eye out. We're going on word of mouth right now for this guy, so. Thank you, Bruce. All right, what else you got? Hey, well, you know, we're, we're into the dog days of summer now. Um, you Don't got, feel like it. It's kind of chilly out. I won't. I, I don't know if I'd say chilly. Ooh, the last everyone had days. hoodies it's, on yesterday. It's hoodies. Hoodies, dude. It's still like in the mid upper seventies. Bro, we live on the water, son. The water. Yeah, sure. It's like twenty five miles away. <laughs> we live on the water. <laughs> it's like the river raisin. It gets I'm, chilly around here. I'm literally a stone's throw from the river in Wyandotte, and I don't. I'm feeling. No, like I thought it was chilly here yesterday. It dropped down to fifty something last night. Well, that's the nighttime. Shit, I'm, I'm a night owl, motherfucker. Oh. No, I was gonna ask though. You got uh, you got any plans left for this summer? You guys going anywhere? Well, we were supposed to go to um, <clears throat> Tawas. Um, I think I'm pronouncing that right. Yeah. Oscoda County, I think. Um, but uh, uh, financial shit happened, so we had to cancel. Um, I still have my paid vacation off. Yeah. ten days. Did that smart. Saturday, Sunday, Monday through Friday, and then Saturday, Sunday, and then Monday again for Labor Day. They can sure. Shock my balls. Uh. I actually took vacation recently, but it wasn't much. It was, it was a staycation, and it was, eh, I don't know, kind of felt like a mistake. Really? Well, so this was the problem. I love being at home. This is the problem. We had talked about, you know, I'd love going to Ludington or just, just out in western Michigan, somewhere on Lake Michigan, you know, and uh, just it didn't make any definitive plans. And then as it was approaching... I found out I was going to be needed at work that Tuesday. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, so we're definitely not going to go anywhere. All right. So, yeah, it kind of just turned into getting some stuff done around the house, which was oh, fine. I, I ain't even doing that. I ain't doing shit. Wow. Well. <laughs> sit outside and relax. Read a book. Um, but, yeah, after the fact, though, I find myself, like, a yearning, like, I got to get to the water. Like, <laughs> I, you know, I love being out there, and uh, it's like a, it's almost like an annual rite of passage. Pilgrimage, you got to get out there and reset. Well, we had booked our place, dude, months in advance, and I told April when we booked it. <clears throat> right around tax time. Taxes come in. Yeah. Pay for the fucking vacation. Don't put down 500. 
Yeah. Pay for the vacation. What does she do? She puts down 500. What happens? Time comes. We owe three, four hundred dollars more. We're in the midst of a financial crisis because of summer, because she only works part time as the aide, because you know only for summer school. Right. Um. So essentially, I told her, I'm like, we have to cancel this trip. So There's no way with Bourbon's birthday coming up, and then a week later we have to go on this trip. Like, nah, dude. You out to 500 bucks then? No, we got all oh, that 100 okay. percent refunded. So I told her we can get a 500 dollar bonus right now or we can struggle the rest of the two months and, and hope for the best like i'm not doing that give yeah. me my money back yeah so i don't know uh i still have um i get i get two weeks vacation from work so i still have some time um i usually i, I often like you like taking some time off around halloween because mm. that, that's fun um or sometimes like i'll just use like my time up in january like i, to- I only get a week so it goes quick yeah, it does. <laughs> it's it does. Not much. So I don't know. I'm, I'm I'm hoping to do a little something still before uh, the summer escapes us because I do love being by the water, going and having an adventure somewhere. Yeah, it's scary that <clears throat> being a janitor, I notice it more that man. Yeah, it's like three months is gone, gone in a flash. Yeah, it's bad. I'm actually happy though because summer routine for custodial shit sucks ass. Not fun. Well, you know, and too, just like having school aged kids, summer's a different beast than the school year. Oh yeah. Oh. Well these these guys stay home. Like this whole house is rigged with cameras. Like we literally can watch them from work. Yeah. And we have the home phone. They wake up when they want. They have their list of chores to do, which is usually uh dishes and trash, take the dog out, uh, brush your teeth. Wash your ass. <laughs> yeah. um, so not real heavy responsibilities. Um, they know not to open the door. Um, anyone who's going to come in will either have a key, and if they not, you don't answer. Yeah, and it, it worked. You haven't had any mishaps with leaving them at home yet. No, not a Nothing. one. Not a one. Not I even mean, like they overflowed the toilet. No, and no one knew no, what the hell to do. No, no, no uh, ill-fated like Andrew starting fires up in the trash can up, up on the Noble Street. <laughs> um, which I don't know. I think every kid must go through that, which is scary. Because I used to go out, I used to take matches and I'd go out behind the ice arena, mm-hmm. and I'd burn hay and stuff. Yeah. And then one day it got out of control, and I panicked and threw it in the dumpster. You, you were by yourself? Yeah. Oh yeah. Thankfully, it went out. Dumpster wasn't a bad place to throw it though. Right. Contain the fire. But as I do that, this guy's like, "Hey, what are you doing?" He's like, "If that thing catches on fire, I know who it was." I'm like, "Shit!" I grab my bike and I just. Book it through the park. He didn't know you though. No, he hell was no. Trying to scare you. He drove like a little gold Volvo looking car, but every time since then, after, even as an adult, I'll see a gold like Volvo. <laughs> Not that it's happened in a long time, <laughs> but I'd always get sick to my stomach. Like, really? There he is. <laughs> he there just drives he like, is. I still know. <laughs> so I just hope my boys don't go through that. Bur- uh, Gibby's going through a knife stage. The fly, the, oh, yeah. Oh, well, he's, well, we he's, definitely he's knifed up. Knife. He's knifed up right now, bro. <laughs> <laughs> got knives everywhere. <laughs> Burber's got a katana. What kind of shit? A katana? Yeah, the, unfortunately the handle's broken, but he's got the blade. Lincoln's been asking me a lot lately, like, you know, sort of, we go to a store and I just got to run in. Can I stay in the car? And I'm like, eh, it kind of makes me uncomfortable. Or... But he's only one of him. Y- yeah. Or as I have two that are, they're both big boys. Ain't no one pick these motherfuckers up and run it with them. <laughs> Ain't no way. Bro, they... Way as much as Andrew. I wasn't concerned about someone just straight up snatching them. It's fucking ass. It's just, it's... you know, people feeding a kid a line of bullshit. I, you, know? you don't open a door for anyone you don't know. I don't care what the fuck they say. If it's a cop, wait. Yeah. Like, my parents will be back soon. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, speaking of people who went through a, a fire phase, <laughs> Stu. Yeah. When we were in high school. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He was, he liked to set things on fire. <laughs> weird Py- pyromania bro <laughs> just like i love it i like to, i want to watch the world burn so uh, you used to go up to the ice arena by yourself and you yeah just, how would you start the fire matches just matches where are you getting the matches greg dude okay. they're in the garage like he never questioned where his matches were going no no dude he, well, the thing, I, I think he used to buy like he'd have a lot i don't know why a man needs that many matches but he'd buy like a whole maybe thing maybe he was going behind the ice i don't too. know maybe <laughs> um my thought process back there was that i have snow and everything around because they kept dumping all the shit back there so yeah, yeah. something got too out of the control, zamboni I just, yeah. I just snow it then never came to that i panicked through the dumpster and ran but so when you say it got out of control what were you you setting hay on fire yeah 
So how big did the fire get? Not real big, man. I mean, probably like I had a decent pile of hay. Yeah. And on top, it just started getting bigger. So I panicked. I swooped it. And just, yeah, okay. You know, I'm surprised I didn't get burned myself. <laughs> like I said, when that guy caught me, I didn't even get on my bike and ride away. I ran with my bike. <laughs> I ran diagonal through the through the the, uh, the 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 park, which looked like a forest at that time. Do you remember? Yeah, yeah. That was, it was it was scary park. back there. Yeah. yeah. Um, I can't believe nobody went missing back there. Well, because the back of that park, if I'm not mistaken, I mean we could look it up, but it it backs up onto like a wooded area, and I'm sure no, it's pretty cem- cemetery. Is that that big cemetery? You that's get to there? the back, you cross a, a a creek. Yeah. Which ran parallel to the back of it, and then it almost like. They designed the park around that. Um, it could have been, yeah, because it ran down the side. The cemetery too, and then, probably and the cemetery pissed. backed up to yeah. the, which was creepy being back there, like yeah, grave. I remember us and, just riding our bikes back there, yeah. And we used to ride, and then they put that path in, and that was real fun. Yeah. So for those of you wondering, we're talking about what has since been renamed the Mike Madonna Ice Arena in Westland. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what the park is. I I don't know. Maybe like I don't remember. Well, it's on Hunter, Hunter and Wildwood. Yeah, I don't, so. I don't know. Um, good times, though. Yeah, good times. Um, I don't know how we got on that. <laughs> we were burning shit up at the at the fucking Mike Madonna Ice Arena. You know, I don't, I don't think I ever really went through a fire phase. Definitely a stealing phase. You usually learn pretty quick by getting burned, and then you're like, okay, I don't want to do this no more. Well, yeah, because you didn't you used to blow up some of your toys too when you were a kid. That wasn't really like me wanting to do it or those, melting them. No, that too. Um, Greg got me started on that. We'd build models. Like, we'd spend hours. Okay, I mean, countless hours them. building these, like, extensive, like, Black Hawk helicopters. Yeah. And then rigging these motherfuckers and blowing the shit out of them. And it was cool. It was fucking awesome because you'd see that the pilot just be like, wing, <laughs> gone. Um, and then when he wouldn't be home, that's when things got bad. <clears throat> You're, you'll remember this story. Uh, I want to say... One of the earliest instances of Jibo's rage. And I'm not talking about the time I shit my pants in his car <laughs> coming back from uh, the up, Upper Peninsula. Um, do you remember? Good Lord. It was just before or just after Andrew was born. I think it was probably just after. So you guys were still in the house I'll on Pagel. Everything changed once Andrew was born. <laughs> that. The root of that, uh, that is when the trauma. That is when the tides turn for the bad times. <laughs> it was not it was no longer good times for old Bimo. It was nothing but step stepchild bullshit from there on out. So you'll remember that house in Lincoln Park. You had that big bedroom in the basement, mm-hmm. which was a pretty cool bedroom. Matter totally, fact, you, totally wasted on a child. You yeah, you probably got moved down there because of Andrew's birth. I'm assuming. I would imagine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I had that giant water bed. Cool, cool room. Dude. You remember, though, that Greg also had kind of like a small office down there? He had a desk. Yeah, I mean, you'd call it an office before he did his coat. <laughs> Do you remember we discovered one day he had those blue bubblegum cigars? Oh, I know exactly what you're going to say now. In okay. the desk. I kind of thought that's where you were going, but yeah. And he, of course, he, you know, he was handing them out to announce the birth of his son, good old Denhead. <laughs> and one day... Oh, fuck. He's at work. I'm sure it was my idea. In fact... I'm sure it was, too. In <laughs> fact, I think you probably even said something to the effect of maybe we shouldn't get into these. Maybe we shouldn't eat 35 so, <laughs> blue cigars. <laughs> that was the thing. Just maybe. There was plenty of them in there. We could have had... We could have each had one and been like, oh, this is Could have had cool. a couple and been fine, Could have had probably. a couple. But the whole point of the game, for whatever reason, was to shove as many of those in our mouths as we possibly could. Why did could. all your games revolve around that? I remember up in, like, Wakamata. <laughs> I think it was Wakamata. It was Cheese Whiz. No, it was always about filling your mouth as much that was, as possible. That wasn't Wakamata. That's, we were up in Munising. Was it Munising? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, we uh, were up Rambus on that Cabin, table yeah. spraying Cheese Whiz in our mouths. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. And then I think one, at one Christmas, uh, at Uncle, uh, Uncle S's, I, uh, I fit, like... 17 olives in my mouth <laughs> and uh aunt one of our aunts <laughs> yeah I mean, you know what i'm talking about right yeah, yeah i know through a fit of course as if anyone eats olives like everyone's like oh we're out of olives what the hell someone better run to the store like, stat well i just spit one out there you go <laughs> like damn so i remember we chomp i'm sorry son we're in the middle of the podcast 
You're going to have to sort out whatever you got to do on your own. Yep. <laughs> he just has this crestfallen huh? look on his face. <laughs> You're going to have to play your Switch or something, dude. It's plugged in. In the thick of it, man. In the thick of it. <laughs> got got my got my oldest here with the, with me. They, I thought I thought the boys were going to be here, but they they had a party to go to. So <laughs> they, I mean, they will be back. I don't know before we're done with this. But Link's on his own playing a video game. Um, okay, so so <laughs> Greg gets we're, home. We're clarifying that he just needed help with the game, right? And doesn't need actual help. He was specified. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I want to yeah. tell the kid no. Uh, like, hold on, I'll check. Hey, son, what do you need help with? Okay. Yeah, not important. Just play through it. <laughs> he's not choking. He's good. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing's on fire. We're okay. That was my rule. Wouldn't that I... be ironic? We're sitting here talking about kids starting fires. Kids starting a fire in my apartment, bro. <laughs> when I was a substitute teacher, kids would come up, tattle, complain all the time. I got to the point when as soon as they'd come up to my desk, I would go, something on fire? No. Somebody bleeding? No. Sit down. Yeah. Have a good day. Like, come on. All right. So Greg gets home. Now, this wasn't something we were intending to hide from him. We thought he'd be proud. <laughs> Look at what he's done. <laughs> Pretty much. In the moment, before I even finished my sentence. Like he couldn't go buy more. Well, he wasn't. He shouldn't have been a parent, dude. <laughs> this kind of reaction. But let me. First, yeah, it was a bad first, reaction. Anyone who has a child, I feel like nowadays would never respond the way this man responds. Um, if it was me, I'm like, come on, man. We don't do that. You know what I mean? Like, that's ridiculous. Yeah. Spit it out. Go brush your teeth. Now we're going to the store to buy more. Don't touch them. Yeah, he flew but off the now, handle. Now give us the reality of the situation. What happened? I don't remember everything that was said. I just remember before I even finished my sentence, there was a darkness that eclipsed his eyes. <laughs> I know the and, look. And I knew we were in trouble. I knew that our joke had gone awry. <laughs> I knew that he did not appreciate our particular brand of comedy. <laughs> Because he immediately like stormed to the room and started muttering to himself like how he was saving those he wanted to give them to people at work and he like pulls the drawer open and oh they was all gone like, <laughs> it was gone <laughs> to me to me that was what heightened the comedy is that we consumed all of it them. could only have been better if he looked over we were spitting them out and trying to re-roll them <laughs> trying to re-wrap them <laughs> pre-chewed bubblegum cigars oh boy. <laughs> Yeah, and I don't remember much after that. We blacked out. <laughs> things, yeah, things, things were slammed. <laughs> yeah, they were, they were slammed. There's a lot of muttering. Yeah, there's like uh, Greg was not the most patient person in the world. Old Jibo. He yeah. um, I would love to give you an update on him, but I can't. <laughs> He's in, in the wind. He is in the wind. All right. Well, he was always an adventurous sort, and let's uh let's uh discuss a bit of an adventure here. I've got a couple stories for you guys. I always enjoy stories of things where they shouldn't be, and uh, we have one of those. Apparently, uh, this story is just from a, a couple days ago. There is an alligator reportedly swimming the waters of Lake Erie. Damn. Title. This is from... If, is if there was another reason not to get into that water, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> we were out swimming at Sterling. Hepatitis. A few weeks Alligators. Ago. <laughs> <laughs> this is from the, uh, what's the source? The Erie Times News. Nice swimming that water? It's Sterling State. Uh, yeah, pretty much scabies doing that shit. We swam there for a bit. nasty. Where is the alligator in Lake Erie? <laughs> the water. Tracks spotted on search's third day. For those who are out on the water near the Erie Bayfront attempting to catch the Lake Erie alligator... Jason Olson, the thing of legends, from Siren's Nest of Exotic Rescue, has some advice. Leave the task to the professionals. Of course, he's getting paid to fucking do it. Well, it's on bounty, son. Oh, Whoever brings it, it in gets money. Oh, I guarantee it is. I don't know about that. Like that Python shit in uh, Florida? You bring it in dead or alive. $5,000. Damn, public, I go a hunting public a, health crisis, bro. I go hunting a python. That thing, if that like, thing uh, eats wait, is a that, kid, is that for a particular python or like any python? I think any python because that'd be my full time job. Particularly a python in the wild, yeah, they're an invasive species. I'd be a snake slayer, bro. There ain't no other big uh, snakes out in the Everglades other than a python. Do they have to be over a certain size to qualify? No, no. I mean, they have to be killed on site. You tell me, I could find a nest of baby pythons. I slaughter them and I bring them in. I'm just like five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Pay me, and they'd be happy to do it. Because, dude, they devastate the ecosystem. Dude, maybe we should relocate to. Florida. They're eating. You ever watch that show? Killing it. 
No. With the guy, the fat black guy from the office, not the old one, the young guy, the Craig T. Nelson. Or no, that's old white guy. Craig T. Robertson, I think. Um, that's the whole show is about him moving to Florida and killing pythons for a living. What? And he's got like a nail gun. He's like, <laughs> just shooting and shit, dude. It's fucking hilarious. This sounds amazing. But it's real. The, the government, who, so who's paying you? The state? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here's the thing. And you though. just got to bring in the dead python. We ain't got to move, bro. We just got to hope this alligator. Alligator propagate in the hot hole. <laughs> okay, now let, let me get to and the then, story first. There you go. Uh, Olson, 38, was out on Lake Area around the foot of East Avenue where the alligator, the alleged alligator, was initially spotted. His journey began early Wednesday morning. Since since then, he has encountered individuals who are also seeking the alligator. Let the professionals handle this one, Olson said. If anything, call the Erie Western Pennsylvania Port Authority or even the game warden or commission. Olson, an animal trapper, learned about the sighting because of the Facebook post by Steiner Roach. He was like jackpot. Steiner Roach, who initially spotted the reptile. Olson said he is concerned if adults attempt to catch the alligator, it will flee. He's not worried about them. <laughs> he's, he's like, I want that gator. <laughs> Uh, Lisa Stiles from the Erie County Humane Society said if they find the person responsible, if they find the person responsible could be in violation of Pennsylvania's animal, animal cruelty laws. So they clearly believe someone just dumped this thing at some point. Well, I think that's usually how it goes. Yeah. Plan of action for catching the gator. Olson per- said. Piranhas, python snakes, shit like that. Like, yeah. Like people get, even goldfish, bro. Yeah. They're, yeah, they go fishing little ponds and shit. They get fucking huge. Olson said professionals are prepared with equipment and a plan for once the gator is captured. We have a thickened nest that is used for larger fish. Olson said uh. it's about two and a half feet deep, depth wise. We have a hook if we need it, and we can. We have a claw and special gloves. We also have a couple of bins just in case, depending on the size. They got bins. Look you're, out! You're the professionals re- have bins. You ever eat an alligator? Yeah. I fucking killing them motherfucker and putting it on the grill. Pretty tasty, yeah. Smoking uh, that bitch. Shirley and I stopped at a Cajun restaurant. And that's a good size alligator. Where was that? Elk Rapids. We were up near Torch Lake four summers ago. Yeah, I got some like allig- alligator tidbits. But you good. didn't see the gator on the grill. No. No, bro. I've, I've seen things. I went to a graduation party. That was what they did for their kids. They had a they gator. They flew in a gator. A I would say well, who are these people who do you I know I can't mention names I don't even associate with them anymore you can figure out who it is someone who had money to fly in a gator well not alive it's, you could buy you buy them ready to they're dead they're skinned okay. Okay, but I'm imagining like a helicopter descends in the backyard oh, I don't know how they, I don't know the means bro they've got the gator bro I don't they shoot it out of a fucking cannon from Louisiana I don't fucking know they lower gator. it right onto the right onto the grill uh, but yeah he um it was, dude, it was big. So the head was not skinned, nor was the tail. Wait, uh-huh. maybe the tail was skinned. Maybe the head, it was, oh, the head and the, and the, uh, the, the, the paws or the feet. Yeah. Those were unskinned, but it was pretty good. Yeah. I think he overcooked it. It was a little dry. Kind of tasted like chicken eating me, but it was cool to see it. You know what the problem was? He smoked it and everyone's a looky loo. So every two seconds, someone's opening that thing. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. Like, Never going to cook doing that. Yeah. You are fucking stupid. Like, stop touching my shit for one. My gator in there. Man, that's a big grill. Whole ass gator. Yeah. Guy had a lot of money. I'm guessing it was an adult size gator. No, I want to say it was probably roughly the size of what they're describing there, like two to four feet. Oh, that's it. Okay. You know, and then you 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 twist their tail around, bend their head. Ah, uh, okay. And you can get them up in there, and then bro, then it's just get your utensils. Okay. Uh, let's see. This continues. If the alligator is captured by Siren's nest. Olson plans on handing the gator over to a rehabilitation center, possibly in Pittsburgh. Apparently, this gator is an addict. (laughs) If this is an exotic pet, Olson does not plan on handing it back to the owner for fear it would end up in the lake again. I would say that's exactly what's going to happen if you give it back to that person. This alligator is not Olson's first rodeo. For many years, he has been locating and capturing animals. The largest gator he said he has encountered in his profession was about four and a half feet while the smallest was around a foot. This guy calls That's himself nothing. a pro. Now, now uh, I have to, me and Andrew were just talking about this. If you're talking to like the layman, four to six feet, they're thinking from the, the snout all the way to the end of the tail. Mm-hmm. When you're measuring reptiles, you go from the snout to the vent, which is their asshole. 
Okay. Because the tails can get exceptionally long. They can get exceptionally short by getting eaten, you know, chopped off, whatever the case may be. Maybe not with a gator, but. Yeah. Um, so it's just very misleading. They should, you should always, they should preface that every time, like snout to vent. It was two feet and then another two feet of tail. But they don't because that doesn't sell. That motherfucker was huge. All right, regardless, a four foot alligator, that's a small alligator. It's not full grown. Well, no. I'm not so impressed by this guy's one. I saying. think caimans get, um, what, the six to eight feet? So he's, I don't think caimans get that big. I mean, watch an episode of uh, uh, Swamp People. They ca- they catching some monsters. Well, there's uh, there's obviously different types of alligators. Well, I mean, there's sure. caimans, there's, uh, I don't know, it's only one I know, but. I mean, not that I wouldn't be concerned if I if I saw a two to four foot gator swimming up on me in the wild. Did you see that but, guy in Florida? The fucking gator took his dog. I think we might have talked about this before. Gator takes his dog, pulls him underwater. Dude gets in the water, cigar in his mouth, goes under, pulls the gator out with the cigar in his mouth still, pries his jaws open, dog gets loose, throws that motherfucker back. Walks out like a boss. <laughs> cigar still in, still in his mouth. Okay. Like, bro, your cigar is ruined. Spit it out. From what I'm understanding, I don't think it will exactly put up a fight, Olsen said. Right now, it will be more flight. It's going to want to run because it's scared. It doesn't belong here. It is not used to this weather. It's not used to the water or anything like that. Paul Kaiser from Best Wildlife Services, a wildlife removal business, surveyed the area after the initial sightings, but he could not be reached for comment Wednesday. Olson agrees with uh, Erie Zoo Director of Development Scott Mitchell that there is little chance of this gator surviving if it is still out in the lake. With high winds and recent storms this week, Lake Erie has been showing white caps and strong waves. If it is the size of two and a half feet long, I'd give it more of a chance than it was than if it was a foot or a foot. What, and what half, would that Olson matter? Said. Well, I'm not sure. And they're assuming it drowned. I, I don't know. Uh, these waves are extremely harsh and I just don't see it surviving much longer out here, to be honest. If it is over two and a half feet, I would give it more of a chance, but it's hard to say. In the upcoming months, the water temperatures will drop in Lake Erie, which will make it even harder for the scaly lake celebrity to survive. Even in the next month or two, the water will be so cold that it won't be able to go into hibernation, Olson said. Uh, some, some further claims. The closest Olsen has come to seeing the, the, the alligator was uh, some possible tracks earlier Wednesday morning. The water washing on shore is making the job tougher for him to track the gator. A couple of eyewitnesses told the Erie Times News that they spotted the gator Tuesday around the swamp area of the water, which is between the East Avenue boat launch and the former Erie Coke plant at 925 East Bay Drive. Uh, there's a gate over there that's private property, Olson said. There's also a little canal that goes into that gate. Personally, that would be a good spot because it's a shallow water and because it's shallow water and it's still and it has still water. Okay. It has about a foot of leeway that is open under the fence. Julie Slomsky from the Airy Port <laughs> Authority warns no one should go toward the area near the plant. It is private property and is currently being monitored by the Pennsylvania Department of environmental protection to keep everyone safe including an alligator or wildlife within our footprint here at the western pa port authority it's important that the community members do not attempt to make any members not attempt to make any contact with the alligator slomsky said in a statement uh so here this summarizes the article what we know bullet points nothing it says (laughs) nothing alligator is still on the loose Bullet point two, location is still unknown, but possibly sighted near the East Avenue boat launch. Bullet point number three, initial sighting was Sunday, last Sunday, but other witnesses claim to have seen signs of it on Tuesday. And then finally, Mitchell said that gators can swim up to 20 miles per hour, so it could be anywhere along Lake Erie shoreline. All right, so let me say this. Yeah, go ahead. They need to do one thing, and that is sit down, turn on your TV, Go to whichever streaming service you use and watch Lake Placid. And you will have everything you need. Because if they can catch a giant motherfucking gator in that movie with Betty White and Bill Pullman, you can catch a little itty bitty one. Maybe use a chicken instead of a whole cow. Thank you. You lower it into the water with a drone, not a helicopter. Right. You finagle them. Okay. And then you shoot them with a high powered trank gun. Okay. You get them on a truck. (laughs) And you roll your credits. I just. I just want to be sure that we're on the same page. I don't think we are. <laughs> you 
do know Lake Placid was a work of fiction, right? Well, of course it was. Okay. It was kind of rude in reality, though. How? Because giant alligators show up in lakes. Not like that. That, that was that a lake dinosaur. Was, that lake was connected to... It was a giant... It was a giant... Crocodile. And then there was a second one at the end, right? That was the big surprise. I think it was actually a crocodile, not an alligator. Whatever. Well, there are two different There were two of them. There was two And it, like, arose up out of the water. There was ate. also a bunch of little babies at the end. Well, sure. They that dumb bitch was still sitting there feeding them after they ate her husband and everything. She's like, set up that oh, sequel. there you go, babies. <laughs> Betty White, God rest her soul. Now, you had a theory earlier. You were referencing the hot spot here in Monroe. What was I calling it? A hot hole? I don't know. That's what it was. Hey, speaking of holes, though, honey we're hole. coming to you from <laughs> the honey hole. <laughs> Now you got you, too caught up in the sponsorship, bro. Forgot yeah, the honey hole, man. Right. Hey, we, gotta, up. we had to give Bruce some props. <laughs> you had postulated that if this thing were at or near a plant like that, some comparable location like the the um, the hot spot, that it could possibly survive. Well, yeah, because those waters, I think, are anywhere from like 70 to 80 degrees year round. Yeah. I mean, that's why the fish get so fucking gigantic. There. Well, going back to uh, Jibo back in 97, he and I took the Wave Runner down there and th- that water lapped up on my leg. And it, yeah, it was it wasn't just warm. It was hot. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Bath water. Not comfortable to swim in. Honestly. Um, but I feel like something that requires an external heat source. um like an alligator would thrive in that like it would have its food but it's also eating like this is how you get the goddamn animal in lake placid it lives in the honey hole eating all these irradiated fish the hun- it's in the honey hole i'm not the honey hole he's not he's not in here with us <laughs> eating eat this irradiated ass <laughs> in the hot the hot spot eating irradiated fish they got three eyes and arms and legs and shit and uh Next thing you know, he's tripled in size, quadrupled. But then the food source is out, so he's got to venture on land. But his scales have gotten so thick because of the radiation, he ain't even affected by the cold. All right, so I thought we were having a conversation rooted in reality. <laughs> now, I will grant you, if it were in a place like the hot spot, it would prolong the amount of time it could survive here. But that hot spot's a relatively small area. It's eventually going to run out of food. I don't think it's that small. When we're talking, like, in comparison to the in entire it. lake. Well, yeah, but that alligator does not need the entire lake. I'm not it saying needs it something does. It can, and you know what? My thing is fish from the colder water are going to come into that warm water. So his supply of food may actually not run out. Okay, I'll bump up the question to you. Do you think it could survive the winter? I do. No fucking I do. way. I do. There's no way in hell. I feel like if there's uh, there any, like, um burrows underneath the ground... Kind of like the beaver shit, like beaver dams. It would have a, and then, dude, next thing you know, it gets yeah, but, immaculate conception, uh, has lays eggs. I don't know, man. We got a breeding. I don't family. know. I don't know. Well, I guess we'll follow the story. We'll see if <laughs> by next spring, we'll see who's like, right and who's wrong. If there's a massive gator problem. <laughs> but wouldn't it make sense that he would go towards warm water? Like well, the sure. colder the water gets, he makes his way from Pennsylvania all the way up here. He's like, oh, that's a warm water. I ain't leaving here. Yeah, but that's the thing. Like it, like. You're talking all the way from Pennsylvania. It's not going to be able to sense that hot spot from all the way over no, there. But it's going to swim north? Not necessarily. It, can't, it, well, it has to. Why? Because it doesn't. Lake Erie doesn't go any more south than where it's at. It goes east. It yeah, goes but east even and... even still. Okay, so yeah, well, I guess we have 50-50 chance. Go it goes. east out to the ocean. Lake Erie doesn't connect to the ocean. Eventually it does. The Great, ah. Lakes, the Great Lakes water system connects to the ocean. What, through uh, Ontario? Lake Ontario? Yeah, it goes through Ontario and then oh, yeah. eventually out to the, through a series of rivers out to the ocean. Because it goes Superior, Michigan, Huron, Erie, Ontario, and then out to the ocean. Yeah. That's what bull sharks got caught up in here, dude. Yeah, well, you know, and that, so that's the other thing. There's There's been reports over the years. There was even a sighting in Lake Michigan once, a, a shark attack, actually. And I guess bull sharks in particular are more adept uh, at adapting. Yeah, to, they can be in salinated water yeah. or regular that's pretty that's scary shit but. well that's how well uh, that's kind of lucy what Jaws is based on there was a bull shark in new jersey mm. that had killed a bunch of people underneath a bridge and then they just escalated that <laughs> you, you think know. they just avoid the bridge it's like uh okay so it's lake placid it's ba- it was based on the alligator here in monroe <laughs> that's the well, over exaggeration here's level the thing too. too like it's only two to four feet long so that's a fairly i don't know how long alligators take to mature to adulthood i don't know if an adult would yeah, have a better chance no to survive. Idea. Now, I would think. Because, well, here's the thing, though. It, it needs us, with as small as it is, it probably needs less food. 
Right. So for the time being, it could probably survive in the hotspot for longer than an adult-sized alligator. But there, I, don't, I think there's zero chance, close to zero chance, it could survive a Michigan winter. It's like that guy mentioned, the, the water temps, even in the hot spot, they're going to drop because the air temperature is going to drop significantly. Yeah, but if it only requires like six, because that water right now can't be more than 60 degrees. So if the hot hole is like 80 degrees in summer, come winter, it's probably about 60. It's like perfect for that. Dude, I don't know, man. When you're talking air temperature consistently from, let's say, December until like March. It doesn't make any sense because I've seen videos of like uh, gators frozen under the ice. Mm-hmm. Like they're frozen, but just their snouts are sticking out. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. So that's not a possibility. I mean, maybe we can get like a zoologist on the podcast. Maybe you should. I'm thinking it's not going to have, things not going to survive. But Lake, Lake Erie's big. So, you know, this thing's nature is going to stick close to a shoreline. Yeah. So I, think. Well, I guess we'll, we'll follow up. We'll see how long this uh, so they, gator can av- avoid the authorities. Listen, if they're going to take my advice and do what I said, I have... If dro- the gator's going to take your advice? No, the the, the people of okay. uh, Pennsylvania, I have drones for sale. So if you need a drone to fly in a chicken, I think I got one big enough. All right, so before we get to our next story, tell me, BMO recently came into some drones. There's nothing to tell. How did you- I saved a dude's life about a year ago. There's nothing to tell. He saved a guy's life, and the man said, here's some drones. And then he sobered troubles. up completely, and now, I mean, except for the cocaine. But now, uh, <laughs> okay, so he hasn't sobered up now, at all. Uh, yeah, well, he stopped, dude. He was a bad, bad drinker, bro. It was sad. He started foaming at the mouth. He was giving fake names. Like He didn't want us to know who he was. I right, know. Wait a second. Back up. And he listens to the podcast. How, hey, upstairs neighbor. How if you're still you? listening, what's going on? I thought your upstairs neighbor just died. The guy was not my neighbor. It was a buddy of mine from Ephraim. His mom lives upstairs. And this guy whose life you saved also lives with the, the mom of the dead No, guy. totally different. Dude, there's nine different apartments. Different upstairs in neighbor. Yeah. Okay, well, you didn't make a distinctions, okay? I didn't yeah. know I needed to. Why would you think that like everyone, I talk about, yeah, everyone I talk about lives in the same apartment? That's because you're ludicrous. looking straight That's, above. Like, they live right above, above you. Okay. It ain't even right above me. I'm just looking for reference. <laughs> okay. Well, let's back it up then. So, you saved his life. Set the scene. Over me, him, me saving his life. Yeah, is there another story that's worthy of telling involving he, this he, guy? He was. Oh yeah, there's a couple of good ones. I'm not gonna get into today. But oh yeah, he was all fucked up. Do we have an alias? No, I don't even know. I don't even know what his real name is. You don't even know his name? Oh, just a dude. Hey, dude. Hey, dude. I think okay. he told me his name. I think it's Chris. Maybe I don't know. I could be wrong. All right. Um, Let's say the story. He gave us a lot of fake names as he was dying. Um. But yeah, he was foaming at the mouth. What a thing to do when you're dying. Yeah, well, we were convinced he was a serial killer. What? (laughs) Because me. Hold on. You start this whole thing off by saying, not much of a story to tell. Saved his life. (laughs) Might be a serial killer. I guess it's a good story. Um, Yeah, because he would like show up. He'd be here for like a week or two. Mm -hmm. And then we literally would not see him again for months. Does he work midnights? No, Might bro. I'm up, at, I'm up at night. This is when I was in after news, bro. I would see him. Like nobody's seen him. He was not here. Okay. Um, and then he'd come back for a week or so. And meanwhile, the apartment's still being paid for. You know, everything's up to date. Mm-hmm. He's just nowhere to be found. And then he'd show up carrying in bags there for a couple of weeks or a week or two, and then gone again. It's just him. And, and uh, yeah, except for the bags. <laughs> I'm, an, I'm, I'm another like, person. I'm like, what? What? What's going on here, bro? <laughs> okay, so you, you pass him in the hallway, you say hi, but you don't yeah, really know. Yeah, him. I don't know him at all. Okay. Never been in his apartment. Um, and then one night he's just fucking hammered, bro. Like hammered, hammered. What the hell was that? He just hear us. Oh, we might be in trouble. I thought you said he doesn't. He live. doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> um so he he's sitting down and he's just Now sl- where is he? In the parking lot? No, on the front porch of the front apartment. porch, okay. Slamming his bottle like the shitty ass vodka, dude. And he just starts like seizing. Mm-hmm. Eyes rolling in the back of his head. He's foaming at the mouth. I'm like, April, call the fucking police right now. Or the ambulance, like, right now. And you were out there, what, smoking or drinking or whatever? Yeah, I was just smoking a cigarette. Okay. Bullshit with him. Um, and so they come and they get him. And they're like, who is this guy? I'm like, I don't know. He lives upstairs. Like, he told us his name was this. They're like, his ID says this. Like, and then I asked him, I'm like, well, are you going to take, like, his booze and stuff? I don't drink this shit. He's like, I'll do something with it. I'm like, who told you to do something with the it? The paramedic. Do something. He's like, so I went inside. I put it on top of the fridge. Do something. For when the guy got out, I figured he was going to want it. (laughs) He did. He did. 
Uh, you know, I can't imagine he gets home from having a seizure and he's like, you got that booze from that night? Shall do, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Shall do. Um, he later accused me of stealing a, a grinder from him. I'm like, bro, you never even had a grinder with you. And if I gave you your fucking booze back and I saved your life, why the fuck would I take your grinder? Like a sandwich? No. <laughs> or a tool? Like for grinding your weed up. Oh, okay. <laughs> Not a sandwich, you idiot. <laughs> yes, it was a steak grinder with Italian and mayo. Uh, just, just to be specific. Um, but then, again, we didn't see him again for a long time, and then he showed up sober. He hadn't had a drop alcohol in a year. Look, I'm like, do you look healthy as fuck? He's like, I haven't had a drop in a year. He's like, I, I want to thank you. I was like, okay. And then he's like, no, I wanted to thank you. Zip. No, they, no, they, and then they zip the bag of that goddamn drone machine and gave you about $25 and shit. Okay, so how long ago was this that you saved his life? Last year. And then he recently was like, I have drones for you. Yeah, he's got a bunch of shit. He's always bringing me DVDs. Like, he's like, oh, he's like, you watch Fringe or you watch X Files. Like, here's some DVDs. Like, he works at Goodwill. Works at Goodwill. Yeah, so he gets a lot of shit that he's like, oh, I'll just pass on. I'm like, okay. I'm like, did you ever ask him after this life-altering experience, like, hey, how come you just seem to disappear for weeks on end? I did bring it up. He kind of shied away from the answer, so I just didn't push it. Did you also ever clarify why he gave you a bunch of names that were fake? No. Again, didn't push that either. Huh. I don't need to be any closer with this guy than I already am, this right? This guy's a real mystery, man. And by the way, if you're still listening. You know. Yeah, yeah, thanks for listening, <laughs> whoever, whoever the hell you are. He listened to a lot. Uh, hmm. Young guy? No, he's older than me. He's probably 50. You've probably seen him. He's got a big fucking beard. He lives here. Interesting. He looks like Chris Stapleton. I don't know who that is. Well, he didn't either. And then I showed him a picture. And he's like, that's why everyone calls me that. <laughs> I'm like, hey, buddy. Glad I got out. Huh. That's an interesting story. Yeah, it's not over. That's a sad thing. <laughs> There's probably a whole other chapter coming, bro, when I decline a gift and I come up missing. <laughs> fucking no bro <laughs> make sure the cops hear this shit all right it'll turn vagars and vandals into a true crime <laughs> podcast of me trying to find your killer i'm like he used to tell me about this guy said he just came up from the apartment once saved his life no i don't have his name he gave my cousin some drones that's all i know that's all i know is check the, the drones prince might be on him huh and these drones came from goodwill no i didn't say that oh okay i yeah, just said he worked at goodwill but he's just had a bunch of drones. Yeah, I somehow. don't fucking know, man. And Andrew looked at it. We looked the shit up. Because Stu was saying, like, those range in like, high high money. And the one I found looked exactly like it was $2,200. They functioning, though? No, that's the thing. It's missing the camera. So the man just gave you trash. <laughs> well, no, because if you buy the camera for 200 you spend $10 to replace the blades, you now have a $2,200 fucking drone. Maybe. I could turn around. I literally could drop the 200 put it online for 500 be good maybe or do you want to buy them alternate theory <laughs> no i don't hey the book bag hey the, the drone carrying case that's a 65 dollar bag and it's brand fucking new and i'm not selling that anyways i'm keeping that for my beers alternate theory <coughs> feds are hot on his trail because he a big time drug dealer that's why he's always just coming and going he's got some pure cocaine stashed inside those drones and he can't be caught with that hot merch so he passed it off to this schlub that he knew who would accept it he's like hey he's got some kids he's probably had some financial hard times he'll think this is a great gift now the feds are coming for you wouldn't he want the cocaine got too hot man he had to ditch it okay so instead of giving me a two thousand dollar drone he gave me a thirty thousand dollar batch of cocaine <laughs> is that what you're implying is more reasonable in Michigan. When the heat dies down, he's going to come and reclaim he's gonna come his kill property. Me. He's going to kill me and my family for the drug drones? I didn't say anything about killing you. He's just gonna we established he's a goddamn serial killer. What do you mean? That, that was your speculation. I don't think that's the case. I think, you don't even know the man. You've never even met him. And I hope I don't. I, I think I am. I'm going to give him your fucking name and number. Tell him who to reach when he has problems hey, now, with vagrants and bandits. Listen, he's, he's welcome to come on the podcast. He probably would come on, actually. Yeah, you think so? Yeah, he's that kind of guy. Hmm. I'm like, he was kind of jittered up there, and I was just like, oh, yeah, man, have a good time. <laughs> hey, God, hey, bro, calm down. <laughs> so what do you call him in your own head when you refer to him? I don't. You don't? I just you got nothing. That's just blue card, dude. Or Is beardy. this the guy you told me about recently when you were like, hey, I don't know your name? He was like, I don't know your name. It's the same guy? No. No, different guy. I don't know. Guy. Too many people you don't know here. shit about your neighbors, do you? No. Okay. My name. All right, let's get to our other story. I know the dirty details. Set that up. I got beer. 
Set it up. I gotta click another. I gotta click two buttons. Well, set it up. Set click it up. Away. He says, "Set it up." It's an article on my phone. <laughs> God. Okay, I'm setting it up, guys. Here I go. And click. It's been set up. Now he's out in the living room yakking with Lincoln. So, guys, this is a story. This is from Michigan. Uh, take it for what it's worth. This is from the Daily Mail which is a suspect news source. Oh Real story, though. I actually heard this um, from somebody who um, works at the hospital this woman was taken to. The title is, Woman who ballooned to 825 pounds after witnessing boyfriend's ho- horrific murder is now deemed a fire hazard with tragic result. Now, that is a very wordy and potentially misleading title yeah she's so, like spontaneously combust yeah. bro what's going on she's here? been deemed a fire hazard let it let's read this story her farts are so toxic that they literally <laughs> they ignite a fire threat dude. hitting the air <laughs> a woman who gained hundreds of pounds after witnessing her boyfriend's murder says she has been deemed quote a fire hazard and claims she has been barred from returning home Uh, Juanina Bates, 33, of Wayne, Michigan, claimed she'd been denied re-entry into her 8th floor apartment at Westchester Towers due to being a fire hazard as she currently weighs more than 800 pounds, she told Fox 2 News. I wouldn't want her above me. Fox 2 Detroit. That's horrible. Yeah, no, I wouldn't want that weight above me either. I I, I, can hear you. Bates gained more than 200 pounds. So she was already... 600 on- pounds? Okay, listen. You should have read this story, bro. Because now you just wasted my goddamn precious time. You had a 600-pound fatty who ballooned? She ballooned 800? She just binged one weekend. Like, balloon. Right. So she's like, the boyfriend... My boyfriend's death was so horrific. I just kept eating. Like, I, I think maybe the problem was already there. Yeah, you never stopped eating. All right. Um... So she gained more 200 pounds after watching her boyfriend get murdered in 2018 and fear overtook her, causing her to board up at home and apparently just pop Pringles cans all weekend. Where was the guy murdered at? Uh, I'm see if there's more details. A buffet? (laughs) (laughs) Maybe they they have the opposite effect when she avoid them. Uh, It put me in a bad space to where I have literally trapped myself in my own body, she said. Bimo, Bimo nearly had a spit take there. I'm fucking trying to hold it together. The Michigander's weight caused her to develop a, a lymphedema, a buildup of fluid in her legs that caused bed sores that got so bad it felt like a knife being turned constantly in her limbs. So she called 911. It took 15 paramedics and firefighters to get her out of the apartment through the elevator after she declined. Come on. Come on. After she declined to be tied to ropes and taken out the window, I was scared. She looked like a fucking wrecking ball. <laughs> I was scared, she told Fox News. I mean, that's just indignant. I can't blame her for not wanting to be. Like, can we grease you up and slide you down the hallway? <laughs> she was taken to Corwell Health Wayne Hospital and has yet to be discharged. Bates had to file an appeal with Medicare to even stay longer at the hospital. She claims she didn't have a place to go afterward because her apartment complex deemed her a hazard, something the management company disputes. Well, that gets interesting. Miss Bates is welcome at Westchester Towers, and we look forward to her returning to her home. Andrew F. Smith of Princeton Enterprises. Liar. Who, who manages the building, told Fox News. We are not aware of any restrictions that would prevent her from returning and wish her all the best. Management is reportedly working to get her a first floor apartment ready, there but she says she fears she won't be able to care for herself once there. I don't have the right medical equipment, she told the outlet. Well, Medicare and Medicaid doesn't pay for a lot of things. Let me finish. I just needed help. I can't keep living like this, she continued. My worst fear was to go home and not getting any help and just die. That was my worst fear. Bates' social worker is trying to get her... Um, get her personal trainers and physical therapists to get her back to health. 
She also got a call from a rehabilitation center in Ohio that is starting a bariatric unit, and they want me to come out there, she told the local outlet. Bates is hoping she'll one day be able to walk again and go outside and just be able to not be a burden on my family anymore because I feel like the biggest burden. (laughs) Sir, please control yourself. She's been relying on her 53-year-old mother for help recently. The Midwesterner is hopeful for the future and said it will only be up from here. I just can't... I just can't keep living like this. I want to be free. Now, before we delve into the cruelty of these jokes, I will say this sounds like a story. Someone clearly had a weight problem. Then they had something tragic happen that they witnessed, and they just completely spiraled from there. She... I think the bit about the apartment not wanting her back is bullshit. She seems to almost admit that herself, saying, I I have no help there. I need... She wants to be in the hospital to receive the help she needs. Right. Go ahead, make your jokes. Give her a break. That's what I say. Because that's not break what your face was. That, stu- break off a piece of that Kit Kat bar. <laughs> she gonna need more than a piece. I don't feel, I don't she feel, gonna need the whole bar. I don't feel bad for a bitch who weighs hundred pounds. All right, I don't feel bad. That's that's a big girl. I don't feel bad at six hundred pounds. Damn, that's like it sucks. Your boyfriend died. Like I want to know that story. I want to yeah. know what because it's like all it was right, cardiac man. arrest. They don't tell you he was murdered by McDonald's. He was. <laughs> That's who murdered him. He met, he met his demise when she rolled over in bed. Got that make cardiac arrest. This is horrible. <laughs> eh, whatever. That's what this podcast is. This is this is. Do not come here for compassion. If one of our two listeners are going to be uh, offended. Hmm. Reach out. That's uh, that's rough. That's. You should feel her thighs. Poor lady. <laughs> Those are fucking rough. That's, she could be a she could be a perfectly nice. person human being i'm That's, sure she is well I'm, I'm not sure she is i don't know her but you just don't bring a 20 piece nugget to split with her <laughs> you bring 100 piece clearly yeah, ain't gonna be much of a split there yeah i might have to look up further see what happened to the boyfriend but yeah that's i don't know not, not that that wouldn't be traumatic but i feel like if you're 600 pounds there was a pre there's clearly a pre-existing eating yeah. disorder or some other trauma. It's not only like she was Drewski size the, and ballooned up to eight hundred pounds. That's no, that's a fucking story. No, that's a yeah. story. He's like the guy. He's yeah. like Lake Placid all over again. That bro. would be a better. <laughs> that would have been a better story. We'll have to find out what happened. To Maybe she can guy. start an OnlyFans. She get a stick. You know what? There's she can an get audience a stick attached to a stick to flick her bean <laughs> on camera. Clearly, she's not able to reach that. You know, I don't know if there's an audience for that. I was there's an more, audience for. I was everything. thinking more of like a food fetish thing. Like she just sits there and she eats a bunch of giant sized food. How about as she's eating, there's a small midget using her belly button as a bowl and it's full of coleslaw. He's... I'd watch that. Of course you would. I mean, I'd subscribe for a month, then I'm canceling. <laughs> I'm all, after yeah, I've had I'm, my I'm, fill. See, you're a fool. I just go online and look for the leaks and I watch it for free. <laughs> Next week, and he's potato like potato salad. He's, he's like looking at the camera surreptitiously. Talk, mm, pretty good. Mm. Got to play to the camera. That's the man. The internet's a weird place, and I feel like nowadays, man. If if I was, if, if I think if I was a woman, I'd be, I'd be, yeah, I'd be taking advantage of all these incels on the internet. Send oh, my, me your my, money. My ass will be open. I'll be on there spreading cheeks. Thanks. I, that's the visual I wanted on a Sunday afternoon. You see Put that it in thing? my brain. I'd spread in front of that. He's pointing. Just, he's pacha, pacha, he's pacha, pointing man. to a child's <laughs> toy. It's an Egyptian toy playset, and the face is is split in half. <laughs> and now a snake just emerged. And now I see that. And well, now there's an alligator <laughs> Look, emerging he's from happy. your cheeks. So. He's happy. It is quite a smirk that fellow's <laughs> that fellow's wearing. He's like, I've got the best job in the world. <laughs> <laughs> So we got we got a few minutes left. We're gonna get some NHL in. Yeah, I've been eager. Yeah, I see that being a problem. Good, good. I gotta make my trades. Can't make trades till a series is done, son. And we in the miri- middle dude, of a series, dude. You you fit the last when we when this I don't make the rules I just enforce the rules. This was the previous actually actually I do make the rules. This was the previous round. That round of, of oh, trades. you're right. You, I never did your trade that you sent. No. Me. Oh, calm down, Nancy. You and got only, to play series. I, I only, trades, ever, I only ever sent you the one, and then you're like, you know what? I'm too lazy to do it. That's absolutely right. <laughs> it's, it's like Gibby oh, went and picked up uh, Kovalchuk. Andrew let him go. Gibby picked him really? up. Really? Yeah. 
Like a Kolkovi, huh? Cost him two points, but all he gave you was in tears. You lose 12-1 to 1 in a game of hockey. He, he was just so upset. That's rough. And I'm just laughing at his face. Like, I mean, just obnoxious. Okay, laughing. didn't you tell me earlier you were like, this man should not have been a parent? Hey, that's a whole different You're thing. You're laughing in your kid's face. That's a whole different Because he got humiliated <laughs> at a video game. He was literally crying. And you're just like, <laughs> bawling. <laughs> Sobbing and bawling is a more appropriate term. Got to toughen him up. Man, you got to control the laughter in those situations. No. It's you not, can't it's laugh. All, it's all out of joy. This this is this is my strategy when when Link has a meltdown like that because sometimes like it's so over the top for right. what has happened like yeah party if this was one of your buddies you'd be like come on man <laughs> but it's your kid so it's just kind of like I'll usually I'll have to steal myself for a moment and I'll go son we need to have better reactions to these guys I just say calm down it's a game but then I return to laughing <laughs> or if I can control it the next goal. I'm laughing even louder. You're like, now listen, I'm going to give you a real quick piece of fatherly advice, and then I'm going to return to cackling in your face. <laughs> Hope this goes well for you, son. You ready? Man up. <laughs> he goes, He goes. Bobrovsky's gone. <laughs> Screaming like me. Sounds like us. <laughs> He's getting shipped out of town. Come on, wrap this up. I need we got a couple minutes to kill. We don't want to deprive Strimpy and Ted these what, last what two minutes. What time is it? We are at fifty six twenty five and counting. We got a couple minutes to kill still. Oh, for fuck's sakes! I need a smoke, boys. You know how it is. You want? Oh, you uh, know what we didn't touch on. We will have to get into next week is uh the cheer coach. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Doing some so set set it stuff. up set it up. So uh the cheer coach at Monroe High was wow you just dropping it right there recently huh? let go um due to some pretty horrific allegations. I won't get into that, but they bad. So, and uh, they seem to be true, so we will... They seem to be true. <laughs> so dig we'll, up a little info and whether they are that. Whether they are or not, we're going to spread them salaciously. Guilty. Nah, they true. They true. Well, generally in those situations, yeah, they like, true. they've been dot, dotting their I's, crossing their T's before they make an arrest in those cases. Right. I don't even know if she wasn't even arrested yet. Oh, yeah, she was. Yeah, she was. Well, I'll tell you what. Before... Well, this is a female teacher. Yeah. Woo! Male oh, damn, student. did you hear that? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Wow, yeah. Well, that, hey, that topsy-turvy. Here we and go. And the student yeah. was the son of the assistant cheer coach. Damn, they got some weird shit going on And she on knew there. about it. And she knew. Oh. And it had been going on for two years. She going to jail, too. That kid's like, pussy, pussy, pussy. Okay. 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 I'm 15 getting pussy. <laughs> oh I'm God. not in Bebo, pussy. Bebo, Bebo's doing a dance right now. He's juking his shoulders back and forth, waving his fingers in toward himself. <laughs> it was the most graceful I've seen him move in my entire life. Well, if you guys, thinking about pussy is what happens. You want to get a hold of us? You know how to do that. Send us an email, vagrantsandvandals at gmail.com. That's vagrants, the letter N, vandals at gmail.com. Before we go, one one last shout out to uh, Bruce from uh, Big Bruce's Burger Spot. Thank you for the sponsorship. I hope business uh, picks up big time for you, Brucey Brucey. Remember? Yep. Telegraph in Stony Creek, BMO. That's right. That's the spot. It's tough to find, but it's there. Tough to find, but definitely worth your time. And remember, be you vagrant or be you vandal. All rascals and rogues, welcome here.